What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of 90 Day Fiance, Love in Paradise, Season 4, Episode 6, Sight, Seeing the Truth. Let's get into Alex and Adriano. I cannot believe, y'all, that with Alex and Adriano for six entire episodes that we have watched these people bicker and go back and forth, back and forth on threesomes. Their whole entire relationship hinges on whether or not they're going to have threesomes in their relationship. I'm just like baffled that um, everything about their relationship hangs on menage a trois. I'm just like, w this is crazy to me. <laughs> this is absolutely nuts that it, it, it's, it's taken up a lot of their energy is I, I like, I can't believe you would think that people would argue about, you know, argue about maybe commitment issues or argue about whether or not they're going to have children or argue about whether or not their families like, um, like their partner or something major like that. But their main area of contention is whether or not they're going to allow threesomes in their relationship. Okay. So Adriana takes Alex to meet his mother and his mother's boyfriend. And the mom is also going to teach Alex how to make Adriano's favorite dish. Okay, fine. So mom's initial impression of Alex was that she was beautiful. She had a lovely smile. It seemed like the mom really took to Alex. She really liked Alex and vice versa. So during dinner, Alex wants the conversation to get real heavy real quick. I felt like, you know, when you're meeting someone's parents for the very first time, you know, you want to ask questions to get to know them better. They ask you questions to get to know you better. Um, you want more information on your partner from their parents. I thought I thought the, the, the conversation should have been a little bit light instead of going, you know, heavy with religion and faith and the lack of faith and all this other stuff. But that's where Alex wanted to take it. And I'm pretty sure she regretted it. <laughs> so um, Alex's mom is Catholic. And so I, and I, I'm sorry, Adriano's mom is Catholic. And so I guess Alex didn't understand, you know, if the mom is Catholic and has um, and believes in God, she's a believer, then why is, you know, where did Adriano fall off when it came to um, spirituality and faith? So him not being religious, so they, the mom of the boyfriend explained to Alex that yes, you know, we believe or I believe and he doesn't, which is fine if he doesn't believe, because whether he's a believer or not, it doesn't change how he feels about you. His feelings for you are still the same. Adriano says to Alex, you know, as the conversation got deeper and deeper into whether or not, you know, this could work out if one person believes and the person doesn't, Adriano says to Alex, I have unconditional love for you. I accept you how you, uh, you know, how you are. And I don't want to change anything about you. But you're the one that is trying to change me um, by making me a believer you know, and so I guess he's trying to be like me, the non believer, the one who doesn't believe in God or who doesn't believe in, you know, organized religion or whatever. I still love you. I still accept you. But you, you know, your religion or whatever preaches acceptance and love and all of this, but you don't have unconditional love for me. You know, you want to change me. So the mom's boyfriend says it seems like religion is more important than the love that the two of you have for one another. So Alex begins to cry because she feels like she's not being heard. She feels like, you know, I think she even said that she felt like they were ganging up on her uh, because they didn't agree with her. They didn't understand why she was making this such a big deal. If the man loves you and wants to be with you and wants to commit to you, why are you making it such a big deal that he doesn't believe? And so I think with Alex, what she's doing is, and this is just my personal opinion. I'm not saying this is a fact. I think that with Alex, what she's doing is she's hoping that if he was a believer, he would let go of this whole threesome thing. I think that that's what's really bothering her. And she wants to use religion to convince him to not want to have a threesome. Um, she felt like they were ganging up on her on the way home from his mother's house, from Adriano's mother's house. Alex brings up the whole religion thing again. And she says, because of God, she has stopped partying. She stopped doing threesomes. And Adriano believes that it had nothing to do with God. He tells her, you stopping doing those things had nothing to do with God. You stopped doing those things because you wanted to stop doing those things. You were taking control of your life. And Alex says, if you believed in God, oh, Alex tells him, if you were to believe in God, then you wouldn't be having these problems. 
And I'm like, Adriano, I mean, Alex, Adriano doesn't think that threesomes are a problem at all. You know, he seeks them out. He wants them. They're not a problem for him. Um, she brings up how he had broken up with her two different times because he wanted to have threesomes. And Alex says, um, you know, threesomes are, are a source of pleasure for him. You know, obviously he's going to seek them out because they give him much pleasure. He even goes on to say that he's had 10 threesomes in his life and each one was better than the last. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> I mean, for him to say that, girl, he's not going to let it go. <laughs> He's not going to let it go. He is not going to let it go. So Alex, Adriano asks, um, asks Alex, what happens if I don't believe in God? Is that going to be a problem for you? And Alex says, yes, any man who believes in God, um, will know how to love me properly. Okay. So then Alex, it's time to move on girl. If you believe that a man who does not believe cannot love you the way you want to be loved, then it's time to move on. Her cousin even told her, you staying with this man, you might be preventing yourself from finding the right man for you. So girl, it is time to move on. He's not going to let go of the threesome thing. He, he, he wants to do that. He wants to incorporate that into his relationships. So he's not going to let that go. He doesn't believe in God for you. Believing in God is important. It's time to break up. It's time to break up. It's time to let it go. Because I mean, if you are that much of a believer, okay, and God is that important to you in your life, Alex, and Adriano does not believe in God, or he doesn't believe in the things that you believe in. If it's that important, it's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to let it go. I don't know what else to say. It's time to let it go. It's time to break up. Moving on to Sean and Aaliyah. So Aaliyah goes to see her mom. And um, it was really nice to see Aaliyah with her mom. Her mom is a big supporter of her. Her mom um, has no issue with Aaliyah transitioning into a woman. Her mother accepts her as she is. Now, Aaliyah does tell us that growing up, her mom ended up leaving her. I forgot what the reason was. I really wasn't listening too closely. At some point in Aaliyah's life, when she was still a child, her mom abandoned her or left her. Or I don't know what happened. And she ended up being raised by her grandparents. And so she reunited with her mom when she was about 20 years old. And so she feels like the reason why her mom is so accepting of who she is and accepting her for transitioning is because the mom feels a lot of guilt. And so she wants to make up for abandoning Aaliyah by, you know, loving her and accepting her for who she is and being a big supporter of her. So she also tells her mom about Sean. Her mom knows nothing about Sean, has never met Sean, never spoken to him, nothing. So she explains to her mom that she has somebody very special in her life that she's going to be meeting soon. And her mom is okay with that. Her mom is like, you know, whatever makes you happy makes me happy. But she doesn't mention the age difference, which maybe that doesn't matter to the mom. But she did not mention the fact that Sean was in his 60s and Aaliyah is going to be turning 25. So on her 25th birthday, um, Aaliyah introduces um, her 25th birthday party um her mom shows up her stepdad her brother everybody's there and Aaliyah gets a chance to introduce Sean to her family um the mom was very happy to meet Sean it seemed like she likes Sean she's very supportive of their relationship and she also invites Sean to come over to her house um for lunch so the mom you know really is digging Sean Sean um has something very special planned for Aaliyah and what that special thing is is that she's he's going to be proposing to Aaliyah Aaliyah. And not just any kind of proposal, but he's going to have Aaliyah's favorite, favorite entertainer. I think the name is Anita, I think was the name of the entertainer. She, um, he was able to get Anita to help him with the proposal. So at some point in the party, Sean gets up and makes a speech. There's this huge screen in the background that's showing all the photos of Sean and Aaliyah together. And so when he makes a speech, he talks about how, you know, he had met a, there's a very special person and this person was going to help him with, uh, doing something very special for Aaliyah. And then they show on the screen, um, Anita with Sean and Anita, um, asks, um, Aaliyah, 
do you, you know, Sean wants to know if you'll marry him and shows the ring. Oh, so it was all special. Okay. It was all, it was cute. It was special. Um, Aaliyah was really shocked and surprised to see her favorite entertainer up there doing this proposal. So it was really nice. So she does accept the proposal. Okay, fine. She accepts the proposal. They're going to be getting married. Now, the thing is this though, I feel like they're jumping the gun. I feel like they're jumping the gun. I feel like the reason why Sean is proposing is that for whatever reason, even though Sean is struggling with Aaliyah transitioning into a woman, I think that Sean still wants to keep some type of a hold on Aaliyah because since we met Sean, he's always expressed how he is not that crazy about Aaliyah transitioning. Um, he wants to be with a masculine man. He doesn't want to be with a woman and he's, it's a struggle for him, which I, so I'm like, how do we get to a proposal then? How do we go from, I'm struggling with this to now I'm going to marry this person. Now, granted, Aaliyah was trying to convince Sean that they still need to be together. And just because she was transitioning into a woman, it did not change who she was. And it didn't change the person that Sean fell in love with. It doesn't matter if I'm Douglas, if I'm Aaliyah, it doesn't matter what I look like on the outside. I'm still the same person that she fell in love with. Well, I guess, you know, she convinced him. Okay. It, it worked because now Sean wants to get married but I still feel like Sean is struggling with Aaliyah's um, journey in becoming a woman and Sean even tells us that even though they're going to be getting married or whatever he wants to know like how deep is this going to go I guess he wants to know if there, if at some point Aaliyah wants to have like a full on um, sex reassignment surgery like wh where, where are we going with this what is the end goal in all of this? And so I'm like, why are you proposing then if you're not really sure? Because I'm thinking that Aaliyah and Sean should have a very frank conversation about Aaliyah's journey and what the end goal is and what Aaliyah is expecting to do um, at the very end of all of this. Like, what is she wanting to do um, before they decide to get married? And also, unfortunately, I feel like Aaliyah, because, you know, Aaliyah and her friend, uh, last week's episode we're talking about that Sean doesn't like the new Aaliyah Sean doesn't like the more confident Aaliyah he prefers the quiet reserved shy Douglas and Aaliyah and her friends seem to think that he wants the shy reserved quiet Douglas because it was easier to control Douglas than it's going to be to control Aaliyah like Sean is like this controlling person um so I'm I'm what I'm thinking is if that's how she sees Sean, that Sean is controlling, that Sean is um, manipulative, that Sean is whatever, then why, why do you want to stay in a relationship with him? And I'm wondering if it's because it's for financial purposes. If Aaliyah is only sticking with Sean because she needs the money, um, m needs the money mostly for her surgeries. That's what I'm wondering. That's what I'm thinking. If that's the reason why um, Aaliyah is deciding to stay with Sean. Because if you see Sean as someone who can't accept the more confident, the more outgoing, the more, um, you know, the, the, the stronger Aaliyah and prefers the weaker Douglas, then why are you still with them? Unless, you know, I'm thinking, you know, Aaliyah might need Sean's financial support. And if that's the case, then if there is controlling issues, the control will never end. Moving on to Madeline and Luke. Okay. So they're still talking about, um, the prenup. And, you know, you know what? Let me just cut this real short because I'm not going to spend too much time on these people. Luke wants a damn prenup. Because Madeline, he's worried about Madeline is only with them for his money and wants to protect, protect, he wants to protect his um, assets and his money and whatnot. Luke, what assets and what money? Because I read an article recently that Luke lost his sunglass business. His, sun, his sunglass business um, failed. It was a complete flop. Um, he doesn't have any other businesses under his name. He has no job. He has a dwindling 401k. What are we trying to protect? Of course, anybody with any amount of money can sign a prenup. Okay, granted, that's fine. But like, Luke, what are you trying to protect? I understand, you know, Madeline, she's 19 years old. Um, look, if you don't want to sign the prenup, just don't sign it. I don't have time for Luke and Madeline. I really don't have time. Luke, I don't know what the hell you're doing with a 19 year old. Okay. I don't know what you're doing with a 19 year old. 
it seems like you're having the same issues that Sean is having. You just want someone young and good looking to control and to use for your own personal benefits. Um, but then you want her to be limited to what she can have access to. You want to have all of her, okay? You don't want to limit your access to her body, but she needs to have a limit, you know, to her access to your money or, or whatever little bit of money you got. So, uh, girl, if you don't want to sign it, don't sign it. Luke, if she's giving you a hard time, just come back to America and try to get your life back together. Try to pick up the pieces of your life and put your put your life back together. I don't really have time for Luke and, and, and Madeline and their prenup prenuptial agreement issues. Moving on to Annie and Kyle. I have less time for them. Um, Annie knows about, so there's the whole thing about Annie and Kyle is that Annie is struggling with Kyle naturally inseminating women. Um, she knows about the one, doesn't know that there's been two others. And so um, I guess Kyle is ready to take their relationship to that next level. He, he's ready to be intimate with Annie because he's going to get an STD test or STI test. Because he's out there naturally inseminating women. Like I said, Kyle is a very disgusting person. He has a horrible, horrible past. I need Annie to Google something about Kyle. I need you to do some type of a search on Kyle, girl. Because you're looking really crazy out here being with someone who has who is as nasty and disgusting and um, horrific as Kyle. Um, good luck, Annie good luck when when you find out all that you find out about Kyle you're going to be so embarrassed you're going to be so so embarrassed now aside from Kyle's history of being misogynistic and racist and just being an all-out jerk besides that okay and besides him doing this whole um, natural insemination thing with the women and donating his um, sperm to help women around the world get pregnant. Besides all of that, Kyle himself is not a catch. What is it about Kyle that she finds so irresistible? Now, she did mention something about him being well endowed. Girl, that can only last you for so long because you're not going to be hunching 24 hours a day. There's going to be times when y'all are not in bed and you're going to have to maintain somewhat of a relationship with this person. What is going to keep you with him? What is it about Kyle that is drawing you to him? I see absolutely nothing. He's very condescending. Um, he's very patronizing. Um, he doesn't treat her the way that anyone would want to be with his whole point system thing, taking away points, adding points, feeling like she has to work for a little bit of his affection. That's horrible. Annie, what do you see in Kyle? Besides him, you know, donating his sperm and all that other craziness. Besides all of that, what is it about him, the person? You don't like how he dresses. He disgusts you the way um, at the dinner table when he eats. It absolutely disgusts you. What do you see in this man, girl? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea why I am watching these these foolish people they're offering nothing as far as entertainment value they're offering nothing as far as you know um the theme of this franchise you know 90 day fiance i'm seeing nothing of that um i'm out of here y'all i'm done i'm so done thank you so much for joining me i really do appreciate it on your way out please don't forget to rate the video if you like this content subscribe to my channel. I apologize for this being a really bad, bad review, but y'all, they are giving me nothing, nothing to work with. I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.